you know, just uh, let us know. Maybe what we'll do is just only get the audio of you. We'll turn the camera away from the, the person's face. Um, if you are like on parole or probation or for some reason don't want people to see your face. <laughs> so, um, so that's and we're hoping last week we had about 20 people from the bench line show up. It was pretty amazing. And, and we voted to have this meeting about this specific issue. So we also voted to invite the city politicians to come uh, to hear what people in the bench lands have to say about their condition. And the reason that that vote happened was, uh, and why we had like oh, everybody for the bench lands vote to do this, is because people expressed their, um, what problems they had with the alleged solution. So for instance, one woman discussed how she went to Overlook, which used to be called Golf Links, which used to be called the camp next to the armory. And, um, and the uh, staff was so abusive that even though she's in a walker and disabled, she walked away from there and moved into the bushes down by the bench lamps. And now that woman, because she's been terrorized by Jeremy Leonard, is moving to the Poconet. So, um, so that, I'm not sure the people in Santa Cruz really want hundreds of people living in the Poconet, but, or the doorways downtown, but that's what's going to happen is about several hundred people are going to end up just living randomly around downtown or in the bench lands. If we do not have some success first in the temporary restraining order and in using and forcing them by either refusing to leave um, or some other means to actually provide real adequate shelter space for people living outside. So that's our, that's our goal. Um, so we're not really officially started yet because one, it's not even six o'clock. And uh, did you have something to say, Tom? They're going to clear the, start to clear the bench lands on Wednesday, kind of is what they go, wink, wink, nod, nod. It's supposed to be cleared completely by the 1st of September. So you should be, you're going to get a lot of people moving here to this parking lot. Well. <laughs> so vote for the city man. That won't happen, you know. The problem here is because of insurance liability and we're a nonprofit. So if someone is on the property and they cause a problem or hurt someone, we're liable for it. That's why we can't have anybody staying there. And that's why this the Resource Center for Nonviolence should be telling the city mayor and the city manager that this problem, because every, reality, even the those places that have that are commercial places. With liability issues, are going to be in trouble. So, so there's going to be an actual, you know, we've been talking about this since everybody moved to the bench lands, that there had to be an actual place for people to move to because, no, you know, because it's not really the greatest place for people to be living. And I think we will hear that from people that are going to speak this evening about the logistical problems that occur as a result of. Living at the bench lands and then being forced into the streets. Yeah. So I just wonder if there's any going to be any part of this presentation or discussion that's going to acknowledge that it sounds like an increased level of hostile, hostile presence of law enforcement in the bench lands. I mean, reading this business of you know bombs, you know, getting a ticket, bombs are getting a ticket in, in a fairly hostile manner. So it's going to be complete move. <coughs> Boom. You're going you to ticket kind of thing. So, um, you know, and, and ways of strategies. Is there going to be any time to spend on, on, on offering strategies for dealing with hospital liability? Yeah, you know, the first thing will be to have people um, speak about their experiences. And like Billy, hopefully, will come. So, Billy just got arrested out of the bench lands. And uh, what happened with Billy is that. He um, was to ordered to move his camp from one side of the drainage ditch from where the tap is to the other side, so he did do that. And then the police, once he got 
being set up, the police came in, arrested him, took him away, and then he just took all his belongings and threw him away. And, and now they, and he t they tagged his garbage, the garbage that they left after they destroyed all his stuff, um, and, you know, as being some violation or something. Then they let, let him out just a few hours ago, and he comes back to see that he's lost all his belongings. And it's just uh, what was remaining of his camp is a big pile of garbage that now has to be thrown away. So, yes? Isn't there an ordinance that they have to store your, your belongings for, I don't know, three days or something? Or, I don't know. Isn't there an ordinance? They have that law, but that law has not yet been um, enforced, used yet. I mean, randomly it is. Every once in a while, somebody gets their stuff taken. You can go to Washington Street. And you can uh, stand there on what is it? What you you one time almost got your stuff back, right? After about twelve trips there, you got catch her. Now, and so what, what was your experience of that? Um, well, I had taken so many times that if I in one year that I, if I happened to be in there again, I wasn't going to get it back. Right. So that. So yeah, yes. Do you have a question? Yeah. A lot of times, sadly, what happens is, like with the case of Billy, he's in jail. Everything's thrown in a dump truck, and uh, and this is pretty common. I would think that's the most common thing. And then what happens? Then you, you know, you don't have a receipt. You don't, you know, they claim you never ha you had it. You know. So even though there's these laws, they don't. It's very rare that the city would follow them. It would. That, yeah. I mean. Everybody should be treated with dignity. That's why I'm proud to be a part of Food Dog Bombs. Drew uh, treats everybody with dignity. Yeah. You know, and everybody should be treated with dignity, whether you own a house or you don't. You know? Yeah, exactly. Um, one second, I'll, before I take another question from Randy. So what we're going to end up do, we're going to do a couple of things. We're going to ask people who live in the bench lands to come up here and speak so that and you'll get like a few minutes to talk. And the purpose of doing it from here is so that it goes out on the live feed to the world so everybody can get an idea of what's happening. The second thing is that we're going to be working on some litigation, uh, uh, temporary restraining order. And one of the helpful things, if you have not already signed up on this, uh, and many of you have, I think about Almost everybody I know that lives outside that's here right now has. But some of you might not. And if you can't remember, if you fill this out, fill it out and hand it back to me. I've got, uh, if you have a, I have two of these, I need a second pen to send around. But then, so t you fill it out and put it on the very bottom <laughs> of the pile. And we right now have approximately 200 of these filled out already. Um, and it, it gives us permission to file this temporary restraining order in your behalf. So that's part of what that's about. So then I'm going to uh, introduce the president of the Homeless Union, Alicia Cool, And then I'll probably talk a little bit more while people gather and, uh, just for a few minutes. And then we will start the um, speak out. We're hoping that some politicians will be here shortly to hear your point of view. <coughs> people who live outside, particularly with a focus of people living in the bench land. So I'm going to pass this around for um, people. I think you can not put this up. Okay. So. so we have an announcement here. I'm passing out this thing called Resources for Resistance, which has a petition on the back of it, or many of it does, much of it does. Uh, and I say there, there's two flyers, one of them, they're all pretty much this. This talks about suggestions about forming different networks of support uh, in the event that the courts turn down the injunction if it gets followed, and in the event that uh, there is continued harassment of people. And it suggests that people might want to volunteer to do some of these tasks if they're interested, have the time, have the energy. So I'm just suggesting to do uh, print the information on the back, and if you're in the bench lands and you want to, 
put where your tent is. And there's a kind of a code that says uh, one near Water Street Courthouse side, two near Water Street River Street side, three near the footbridge. So it's a way of, in case the union wants to reach you, or in case uh, you know you want to reach each other, that's a way to do it. Uh, that's it. Okay. So, um, so anyway, we should want to uh, talk a little about the union and uh, what's going on at uh, Okay. So my name is Alicia Cool. We are have just gathered here this evening. It was a suggestion um, from the people that gathered last week that we come together and we make our voices heard about specific things that are going on. Um, one is the fact that the city is going to close the bench lands. Two, um, the shelter options that are being offered to people. Uh, we are opening the mic to talk about what your shelter experiences are, um, what your experiences are being homeless, uh, maybe some of the barriers to the shelters. Um, I know that a lady shared that um, due to the curfew, she lost her job, so she wasn't able to stay at a shelter. So it's really things like that um, that we feel like city officials and leaders need, need to hear um, so that they can run successful shelter programs. Um, programs that really benefit the people that are using them um, and so that's mainly why we're, why we're here today we want to open the mic so that people can speak we kind of want to keep it short um, and then we can circle back because there's probably a lot of people that have a lot of different things to say um, you know different avenues of their experiences and so we're going to open up the mic to talk about that who wants to be first ah, right who wants to, from the, somebody, you want to go? Okay, cool. Excellent. So say, say your name or whatever name you want to use. Hello, my name is Pauline. I, um, as of June 17th, oh, somebody's I asking. lost somebody my in the audience uh, is asking. Years. What's the answer? And, um, Can you sign in or what? Can I sign the petition? Um, petition? I haven't put it up yet, but I guess you could. Being I'll try that. Increases and slumber, and, uh, and COVID rent relief uh, gave up on a few other things as well on April first. Um, and I, as I am currently on a Section Eight voucher, I've been on it for fifteen years. I took a survey of some of the tenants down at uh, Lands. 218 people I took a survey for, thank you, uh, 42, including myself, had Section 8 vouchers. Um, and 27 of us had been struggling with finding proper housing with all fees pertaining to application fees and additional fees that we must pay for background checks and credit scores. Um, credit scores on Section 8. Um, so that's a total of 218 people I, I asked. 42 of them have Section 8 vouchers. We are struggling. We cannot find anything that's feasible. Um, I have a disabled daughter. Right now she's currently living with her father. And this, our apartment is the only place she's ever known. And um, I've been depending on food and bonds since the very beginning. Um, even when I had my apartment, my daughter and I always pertained to food and bombs just because we felt welcome there. Um, so um, between um, bench lands and uh, food and bombs, we need them. Um, and until most of us are who are really struggling to find housing that are on straight and narrow, or, you know, some of us do have mentally handicapped or uh, addictive personalities, I should say. Um, there's a lot of us that are really trying. But these application fees for apartments, or studios, going all the way out to Hollister is becoming ridiculous. Um, and the motel pays, especially the weekends, are killing us. Most of us are living on SSI at only 900 a month. Um, so, 
as a bench land tenant, a new tenant, uh, we are in dire need of a stability. And right now, we are all cuddled together, but we are one. We are one. Food Not Bombs has been there helping us when some of us can't not get food stamps. Some of us don't make enough income for the job or SSI. So I'm asking you with all due respect, help, you know, help us. Help us that some of us, or most of us, a good percentage of us, who are trying to find a place, you know, um, find a place that doesn't always require credit fees, credit score checks. I mean, we can't have 600 and above. Some of us like 400, okay? But if you like currently live, you know, have had a good resume or a tenant, you know, landlord, it shouldn't be hard. But it's $50 per application fee for front of an apartment or studio or anything is becoming incredibly insane. So I'm asking for the city of Santa Cruz to help us because we are a family down there. Food Not Bombs is our family. They're the ones who's keeping us sustained. And without them, I'd be hungry. I'd be starving. You know, um, let's take the best cup of coffee ever. <laughs> um, so I'm asking for any, any, any help from the county. You guys had $14 million. Where did that go? We got messy portables. It's disgusting. There's no water in, in those wash tubs. Um, but we are all one down there. We are one. And we're going to fight. And we got, most of us talk about chaining ourselves to a tree if need be. Because you ain't going to get us out of there. Because, <clears throat> you know, it's going to take more than a bulldozer to get us out of there. This is family. This food not bombs is family. Like I said, I've been part of food not bombs since the very beginning. Even when I had cars, home, bank accounts, and not looking so roughed up. But I'm comfortable where I'm at right now until I get back on my feet. But I just need assistance on the damn credit scores, the damn uh, application fees for apartments. Ridiculous. So, on behalf of Benchland, I am Pauline. I've been there since June 17th. I feel like I've been there forever. And if you're not bombs, thank you. Thank you so much. I've been a part of you. You know, since the very beginning. Uh, so, so, you want to speak for now? or? Oh, no. Not now. <laughs> Who else from the Benchlands wants to speak? You want, Robert? Okay, yeah. Beautiful. I got a lot of stage. So yeah, you do. You better get up here. Come on, come on. right there and I had my phone with the camera. It was for me now. And I said, my face is my silver. I started walking away. 
and one of the cops said, the other cop, damn it. And they tackled me right under my car. And they didn't beat me up, but they got my hands. I had a pocket knife, a little fold-out pocket knife. They said I had no weapon. I mean, it's just ridiculous. Then I was so skirmished, when I got up, my foot hit a female officer in the face, but it didn't break her jaw or any of her teeth. I didn't hurt her. In fact, I heard her say a few minutes later, I'm fine. I heard her say that. And, but I'm still facing felony charges for beating up a police officer because they made all this shit up. And they get to do whatever they want with us and our rights because, oh, I can't afford a lawyer that costs Twenty thousand dollars to show up. We need more public bathrooms downtown. It's ridiculous what the public bathrooms are. They say we shit on the streets. There's no trash cans and no bathrooms. That might be why that problem is happening. But they're trying to point it that all at us too. So um, yeah, that's what I got to say. And things need to get a little better. Thank you. Hey, continue. Come Stand up. Any of the Roberts want to go up? You can speak from where you're sitting. Come on. Okay. I got a lot to say from the beginning. Come on, Robert. Yeah, he's just fixing the mic. I'm sorry. Well, I was a bachelor from Ross Kiff. Uh, when I went there, I signed up so everybody else could get into something. Then I was at 1221 River Street. I got 86 for no reason. Because I don't like to tell, but I saw one of the staff members started me on a Friday night. And he was looking up the bed. He had a camp at 1221. I couldn't get in there to get any of my things. I had my car repoed, taken by the police. I don't know where it went. I had 23 tickets on it. Bathrooms, yes, I see that all the time. I got tagged as a healthy cop here. I'm on both sides of the fence, but I'm a end to end person myself. So they were first had it open, it was really nice. You'd come and go, but you just couldn't have a lot of crap. But the water was better, bathrooms were clear, and I had a dress issue with them about the hand wash, how dirty they were. You know, the water, if you don't take them out and replace them. And I even asked the guys to come and clean the toilets. He had no so, but yes, that, that dirt up was really bad, you know. So, uh, I'm dealing with things too. But I get mad because I want to take them out. But, geez, you know, we all have to stick together. People don't stick together, right? They, they, they're cutthroat. And then by that, everybody's getting penalized. And I hate to say things, I hate to be in public. And I have my own issues. But, thank you. Thank you, Thank you. Thank you. Some more uh, Benchlands residents or other pe or people living outside that didn't fit in the Benchlands? I can take a second to talk about Take it, some, take it, yeah, so. So just to take a second, I don't know, you know, how educated our crowd is here about what options there are available for people who are in house right now. But I work for a local nonprofit, and I do want everybody just to know that right now, housing vouchers are not being offered. Um, for a while, there was some emergency housing vouchers, and there was some disabled housing vouchers. They were offered for a short period of time. Some people right now have those vouchers, and they're having trouble finding units. Um, and so that's been a major issue. But right now, we're not even at the point where we're giving more vouchers. And so the only thing being utilized is something called rapid rehousing. What that is, is it's temporary rent assistance. It's kind of like a tiered program where these nonprofits will pay your rent for up to a year. And it's like a little at a time. And then at the end of that year, you're expected to pay market rate rent. And so what we're seeing is that even if you're lucky enough to get housed in one of those programs, you end up being cycled back. At the end of the year, you're most likely homeless again because not many people, you know, go from being homeless to making forty-five dollars an hour or something like that at the end of one year in order to pay this, you know, crazy inflated market rate rent. 
So I just want to take a quick minute so that everyone knows that's the status of our rental assistance right now. The so, other uh, Benchland residents want to speak? Beautiful, come on. Yeah, beautiful. That's the point of this. Thank you. Hello, everyone. My name is Belita, and I am not prepared at all, but um, <laughs> I'm just really busy trying to get everything done that needs to get done for, for us down there because um, I've worked my whole life. I've not worked, and um, I go to UCSC. I majored in environmental studies. I'm just trying to like do the right thing every day, uh, but it's really hard when there's no when you're homeless and there's nowhere to go and there's no homeless shelters and there's a lot of money that the city has gotten to build homeless shelters and yeah, that there's none and um, city council meetings. Uh, I don't think it's a city council meeting. No, this is a, a <laughs> union of the homeless food and bond people. Awesome. Um, my, my boyfriend went to a city council meeting and he was laughed at when he tried to share some of our like, thoughts and ideas. And um, basically, I, I want to start a, a lawsuit, like a class action lawsuit for people who are disabled and um, need help and aren't getting what, there's, there's just been a, a huge um, misappropriation of public funds. And I think that yeah, we need to come together and, uh, Stand up for, for what's right. Okay. Uh, okay, for the lawsuit, we're just going to do it ourselves and we're going to do it the next couple of days. So that's the story there. So, um, any, uh, and we've done this, will be like what the third. Third time. Third time we do just done so, it on our so own. So where, where do we go to tax to hold the police accountable? There's no accountability and we need to inform them that these guys are fucking out of control. Well, you know, the thing's going to be, uh, I'm going to speak just for a short bit, and I'm hoping that a few other people, like Billy, who uh, will be here, and a few of the other people I spoke to, I don't know if anybody here has got a bike to go over to the Benchlands and make sure everybody starts coming over, although I bet, right like, now. that. But, Right yeah, if you could, thank you. Yeah, just start sending people over. As many people as you can. Yeah. yeah. So, um, so anyways, the uh, yeah, the reality is that there's going to probably be a doubling of the unhoused population between now and the first of the year, right? So we're gonna like the 500 people that are in the bench lands now would theoretically become a thousand people, but well, although they can fit there because the 500 that are there. Now, so um, so th this is going to get to be real, real wild, Mad Max type of future here in the coming months, and we just have to face that fact that um, that, that even already. And I talked to Sonia, the current mayor, and she admits that when you go downtown, virtually every doorway has people living in it. Now, that's wild. We have. Hundreds of people living in the bench lands. So this is going to uh, escalate way out of control. And uh, what is sad is for, I remember I first spoke at city council in 1988 and urged the city to plan ahead for an ever increasing number of unhoused people by doing things like building a single room occupancy hotels and, and, and just to you know, look, you know, look towards the future that the economy is, is getting worse. More and more people are losing their homes. And, and now what do we have over, I think it's, uh, um, well, there's 40 million people facing eviction currently in the United States. I think in California we have, what, 660,000 people that are, or households that are currently um, greater than two months behind on their rent. So we can, this will be like a massive, massive crisis. It's already a massive crisis for people living in the benchlands. You know, it's not really the most fun place to live. I have not 
talked to a single soul, and I'm down there all the time. Joy's down there all the time. We run into everybody going, woohoo, this is great. You know, the rats are smaller or something. No, none of that is going on. <laughs> so, so uh, you know, we're going to end up with a, a very high percentage of the American people living outside here in short order. And, there, and, and it seems to be that since this, the government is not at this point interested in addressing this problem other than through police, um, and it's not the cops' fault themselves that they're so, I mean, individual cops are pretty brutal and horrible, as was the case with Joy just the other day, but it's also a system that is brutal, and it's a city manager, and it's a city council, and it's the, the people that, the hedge funds that fund them, and, the, and Google. Now, you, have, you may all know that, for instance, uh, the treasurer of uh, Take Back Santa Cruz, Manuel Prado's wife, is the chief attorney for Google. She's a mul they're a multimillionaires. They're some of the wealthiest people in our community. And they, Alicia did a Public Records Act request and we got documentation that they have been having meetings with the mayor and the chief of police, this was Mills, and the city manager, uh, um, Martin Bernal, and, um, and I forget, maybe my was with the mayor, something like that. And in the 14 pages we got, 13 pages, they talked about why are they not towing Alicia Cool's RV with her family in it? They also want to know why they weren't, why the city wasn't towing my completely legally registered vehicle. What is wrong with the city that they aren't taking Keith McKinley's vehicle? So I have no tickets. I'm fully registered. There's not a legal purpose for taking my vehicle. But you have yet a person who on her 700, California uh, Form 700, says she has more than a million dollars worth of alphabet stock and she has over a hundred thousand dollars worth of uh, um, birth halfway stock they have a three million dollar house and they're after a, a used rv with three little kids and a mom and dad that's insane after some random guy that's feeding people's car to just take it that's the kind of insanity that we have here in, the, in this community and that Google could have built shelters for everybody. They dug in about a half, I think, what, $600,000 to abode in this community. But they don't house people. No, There's no plan. There's no plan. This three-year plan, which is the same as the last three-year plan, which is the same as the last three-year plan, doesn't result in people having safe places to go and live. It resulted in uh, Alicia doing a lawsuit and suing the city to block them from evicting people from San Lorenzo Park and then us negotiating to have people move down to the bench lands and, and, and us feeding people every week at the bench lands. So that's cra crazy. Okay, so now we get some more residents from the, from the bench lands. Who would like to speak next from the bench lands? Any, uh, I saw a couple people come in. Oh yeah, there you are. Come up. Yeah, well that's an interest. I mean, right now, according to the ACLU, what, we have like 25 places for the people at the bench lands to move to, but I don't know how that's gonna work. Okay, Troy, great. Um, well, I didn't mean to increase the last five years. Uh, and lately I just noticed that a lot of attitudes about the public here are increasing. Um, and I do believe that some of the things, that some of the activities that I've taken photographs of or videos, um, such as a burned out stove on the right side of Water Street on the levee, it wasn't burned there, it was placed there. And we don't have like the means or to, to, to do something like that. Or, and, as far as the uh, fire in Pocono the other day, I don't, I don't even believe that that was started by a homeless person. I think it was started by people that want us gone, and we don't do nothing to stop that um, getting rid of us. Um, I mean, I, I think we should, they should be investigated. I think they are criminal. 
I lost my car uh, because of five tickets which were paid, but they still refused to, refused to call off the tow truck driver after he paid my tickets. Uh, since then, I've lost all my belongings probably four times. Um, um, and my health is worse because of having to live without uh, transportation. Uh, I just, uh, I think that what I really want to say is that I think that even homeless people matter. I think that we're all important people and people that die are dying here. Could maybe five years from now got their life together, got with a house like Alicia, and maybe done something to make a difference in this country or world that can better humankind. We are sons, daughters, uncles, aunts, nephews, cousins, nieces, sisters and brothers of America. And I see that they treat people that come here from other countries better than their own and because of money. And America isn't about money. It's about freedom, and it's about life, liberty, and pursuit of happiness or, or property. And, and don't cause harm or loss to your neighbor. And they're causing harm and loss to us. I mean, we have just as much right to be here in Santa Cruz, beautiful it is, it is as anyone else with money. Just because we don't have the ability or, or and it's hard because it's smacked down into the dirt. Some people can't pull themselves back. They have to Just real quick, I want to talk about the shelter capacity. One of the biggest uh, concerns with the city shutting down the bench lands so quickly is that they had talked about shelter capacity with the opening of their new um, their new spot up by the armory. With those two and 1220 River, they're only looking at shelter capacity for maybe about 85 people. And that's you know, 85 to 100 if we're being generous, but we're talking about a population in the bench lands that exceeds well over 200. 250 easily upwards. Um, you know, we've witnessed up to 30 people in groups there where you might just think that there's two people in a tent, that's not necessarily true. So I think that the city has kind of jumped the gun with wanting to close the bench lands at this particular time when they don't have the shelter capacity and a real adequate plan to do so. So that's the biggest concern. Something like that affects our entire community. If people don't have a place to go, where are they gonna go? We're still in the middle of the COVID-19 pandemic. So there's just, there's a lot of concerns. I also wanna mention that that encampment has been city sanctioned since we did the lawsuit. So it's been in the city's power to provide services. Like I read the mayor's message that came out, I don't know, yesterday, the day before, talking about all these issues, how it's become, you know, a drug haven, there's trash, there's pollution going into the river. These are all things that could have been mitigated by the city by providing additional services, the extra trash pickup, more services. They're only talking about really bringing in case workers and case managers when they're talking about the closure. What about the whole time that it's existed there? Yeah. And so that's the big thing. It's, they're really not prepared for closure. And so until we have a more adequate plan, we kind of need to do something about that. And that's kind of where we're at. Yeah, you can talk. I, I, I used to live on the side of the road in camp for a couple of years. But I yeah, was fortunate enough to put a trailer on a piece of property and pay rent out of my Social Security check. But I've taken food down to the bench lands and for food not moms. And since then, I've been down to the bench lands quite a few times. And you know what? I've always felt enlightened when I left because people were so kind to me and they're so full. I mean, these people, they're. <laughs> People that live in houses aren't perfect. How do, why? And one guy told me when I was down there not so long, he says, I don't judge anybody. And he says, I don't judge anybody. And I said, you know what? I need to hear that. That's really good. 
I mean, these people, they're decent. I mean, none of us are perfect. I don't live in a house, but I mean, people, I don't know, they, 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 my understanding is the city bought property across the street from Coral uh, Street Shelter. Are they housing anybody over there? Are they offering anybody housing over there? No. They've taken money from the government, or not taken, but they've been allocated money, and it never gets to helping these people. They create new jobs, $200,000 a year for some, uh, in, uh, I'm an OG, a pencil pusher, but now they call them techs or whatever. But you know, the, uh, the, the money never gets to helping these people, and, and I just feel irate about it. I mean, I, every time I've been down to Men's Land, like he said, people are jumping around, hooray, hooray. No, but they really could be there. I feel enlightened every time I leave there. Thank you. Okay, now we're there. Thank you. What's up, everybody? Forget I'm a resident in Men's Land. I want to address, first of all, this, uh, this sparsity here by the Santa Cruz mayor. First thing that really caught my attention here is, uh, despite the fire department's regular efforts to help manage fire safety issues there, the fire risk is very serious. It's a 15 minute shower. 15 minute, okay. Should be five. So that's, that's yeah. what, what is that? Six. It's what, like maybe 20 people shower. There, we, we, we complete the list of people usually, there usually aren't too many people after the fact saying they didn't get a shower. And then Sundays there's showers and then uh, Housing Matters has showers. I, I feel you though. Yeah, the Housing Matters, that place in, yeah. They have accused me of jumping the wall uh, late at night to go visit somebody that I don't even know who lives there. Uh, and, and I am banned from that property right now because they say I jumped the wall. They said they have video and picture evidence of it. I asked them to show me this video and picture evidence. I asked them for the dates that I so-called jumped this wall. She gave me the dates and I said, that's crazy. When these dates 
they can stay here for a while. I was on equal monitor confined to my RV. I used to have an RV before the sheriff's found way to the tow it. They, uh, it's a long story, but they, they basically, they arrested me for some warrants. They said that uh, I, I couldn't be bailed out on or, or let go on it. And um, they arrested me, towed my RV. I bailed out the next day. Uh, as far as I know, if, if you have a warrant that you can't bail out on, you can't fucking bail out the next day, right? So they did that just to get my RV, and they do that to a lot of people. Um, yeah, why? Because... The people with money around here don't want to look at an RV. Like, no, they want your money. They want to make money. Uh, how? They can't make money off people. You can't squeeze blood from a rock, you know? Like, statistics. So, yeah. Can you also describe what you saw with Billy? And, and oh, my neighbor. So just, just last Thursday, my neighbor, Billy, he uh, he lives next to, okay, so the city put in a water faucet or whatever down there with no drainage, no nothing, right? So... We dug a ditch for the water to drain, and it led to the river. Now, this isn't super polluted water. Uh, people wash their dishes there sometimes, so maybe some, some Dawn soap is getting in there. But if I remember correctly, Dawn soap is what they use to this animals and oil. Yeah, right? Right. So, like, how is that hurting the environment? The really city much. pushes out a bunch of stuff about 3 o'clock in the morning. You'll hear it. <laughs> Oh, yeah, yeah, because in the river, in the river fills up. That that, that, that that river fills so, up. You know, uh, some soap. Yeah, yeah. complain about some soap. Yeah, if anything, it's clean in these guys. So my neighbor, anyway, he lives next to this this drainage ditch, right? And the cops came, and they say, "Hey, you need to get out of here. We need to clean all this stuff up. It's polluting the river." They let him empty his tent and uh, uh, get. You know the belongings that he really wanted to keep out of it, and they said that you know get them out, put them in a pile over here, and we'll, we'll leave it. And they had a dump truck there and then a backhoe to get all this stuff out of there. They let him empty his tent, and then as soon as he was done doing that, they said, "Okay, okay, Billy, you got to come up here now." And uh, Billy goes up front, and they arrested him for some more that They said there was nothing they did to me. They said there was more to that war. And as, as far as I know, one person they were. Oh. Yeah, pretty much. He, he's out today. Uh, what, five days, four days later, five days later, he was out this morning. And everything that he had is gone. Uh, the city let him take it out and put it in a pile. And as soon as they had him in hunting handcuffs in the car, they took that pile. That he, he, all his cherished belongings, stuff that he spent thousands of dollars to get, yeah. is gone. It's in the dumpster. Yeah. And they do this to us time and time and time and time again. And it's, it's really... It's disgusting. I mean, we have these people that come in and clean clean along the, the back of the camp there along the creek. And and I mean it's just it's despicable when you got these people that care more about saving a duck than than providing any any useful anything for people. That's right. We're human beings. That's right. We deserve better than this. The city needs to provide running water for us, not these just pump water things to, to wash your hands after you, you use a disgusting porta potty you know. Um, we need showers. We need access to these things 24 hours a day. There are 500 people down here at least, probably more. And the city's not doing their part. How many millions of dollars have been given to the city, to the city by, by the federal government in the past few months? I know in February they got five million. I heard just uh, like last month, I think they got allocated twelve million. And when they give out on G eight, ten million. That. Ten million, yeah. Like you know, these million. are millions of dollars that are going to what? They did nothing for the homeless. I know, they like hot dogs. They went hot dogs. Oh, they gave us some hot dogs. No, they went on a visit. Yeah. No, it, it went to the H P S H P. Who knows where it went, right? Yeah. Well, well you know, the H P S supposed to. Don't, that's, don't, a, that's a privately owned shelter, right? It's not even supposedly run yeah. by the city. But it's it's just disgusting. We need to we need we need transparency in where the, the spending is going. These millions of dollars can can do a lot of good for a lot of people, and it's doing nothing. That's they say that they're 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 paying oh, overtime for the cops and fencing and what they yeah. paid four hundred thousand dollars for a a, a fence a uh, van. where a van a van yeah they paid four hundred thousand dollars for a van. One van. 
Yeah, 300,000. It's all over in front of the courthouse. There's just a little bulletin board out there. Yeah, with the like the used a security man. That's what yeah. it is. And the guy yells at us at night. Anybody on the property. Uh, so it's like a property when it's from the courthouse. Right? Okay. How is that? The, this, this is not right. And we need this to be publicized. We need everybody to get involved. What's up, Critter? Well, I'm sorry, but I didn't feel good. my test. Oh, can, can you come up and talk? Uh, first, you All right, thank you, everybody. Well, thank, thank you, sir. My name is Daniel Lexington, and I'm a magician. I'm looking after the higher forces, and I prefer to them. Whenever I'm a cat, I tweet the lunatics. He put a note in my tent, said I had one day to get out. So I called the police and said I was going to drain the bank account of the chief of police and the police department if they came and took my tent. And we did bring the bank of the chief police's bank account. There was $250,000 in it. Yeah. And, oh, and then the bank the guy called the police on me. The Bank of America vice president who had $1,890,000 in his account, and they fired him from Bezel. But so we took all his money, threw it away. And uh, when those cops came to my tent, they reached into my tent and they found they were burning. Because John Juan, the sorcerer, put a, put a spell on my tent and anybody who reached their arm in, except for the ones I allowed, would burn their arms or their heads or whatever they stuck in. And uh, Amotep ripped the guts out of the, one of the cops. Wow. He, he reorganized the guts with his staff. So if you know any cops that want to be punished, just give me their names, I'll immediately punish them. I got one name us. Who? I'll write that down. He's serious, you guys. He's got a Ross down. also. He's going to write it down. Demas. I'm not going to ask you about this. Demas. Any other names? Mugliotti. Nima. Nima. Any other names? Right? L I M A. L I M A. Nima. Okay. Well, I'm going to have the, the greatest sorcerer of all, George, the ruler of the ice world. I'm going to call him right now, and he's going to make this guy into a non cop. He's going to smash his personality, he won't be able to function anymore. We could kill him. No. I don't want that to call him. want that. No. 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 Okay, so I'm going to call George right now. Okay. Thank you, Jerry. That's great. So, yeah, the, the great. Yeah, thank, thank you, Jerry. 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 Thank you, I was living in Texas. I relocated there um, where I was uh, actually in ministry. I was part of a recovery um, church called Victory Outreach. We're international and we uh, are in inner cities of the world where we develop um, recovery homes, <coughs> training centers, and churches. And um, pretty good at it. If you guys look it up, it's called Victory Outreach International mm -hmm. everywhere in every inner city. Um, and it would be a prime location where I'm at right now. Um, and so uh, despite what I was going through, of course, I you know resorted back to my old ways of, of, of dealing with a uh, pretty hectic and um, traumatic uh, incident being um, forced out of my home into transit um, through our justice system, and then all of a sudden a week later, and then a fire happened. And before the fire happened, um, there was a bulldozer that came bulldozed my stuff. How many people have uh, stuff gotten bulldozed before? No one here? Yeah. I know that there's a number of people down at that park that have, and that you probably even want to say something, but are afraid to show their face for whatever reason. Um, I'm sure we can come up with all kinds of, and this could be a lynching party, right? I'm sure we have a bunch of issues, and I'm sure they have a bunch of issues. When I say they, um, I'm talking about the other party, um, or, you know, the, the city and the county and the police department. Um, but uh, I think I have a solution, or at least an attempt to a solution or uh, an answer that I've been kind of pondering on that I think um, is possible, I believe it, it is possible. Um, for the first time, I, I see a community. Um, before, there was um, homeless people who kind of hit, and then, um, you know, uh, post-COVID, um, we have Sa San Lorenzo. You know, San Lorenzo is a, is a, is a community now. Um, there is 
people who lost their homes in the fire or, or lost their jobs due to you know, COVID and became you know, homeless. And then the homeless who were homeless you know, before, you know, they kind of mixed in together. And I believe, well, I know for a fact that they found a home within each other, within the community. Now, we might not have a location, but we have a home. Um, and I mean, I think it's, it's barbaric for somebody to come in and rip, and rip a home apart or, or exactly. rip it from their home. I mean, it's unconstitutional, correct? Yeah. Um, and that's what's happening. We're, we're, our constitutional rights are being violated. That's Just because right. we don't have a, a facility or, or a definite um, structure, our home is our community. Right. Um, and so that's what we're standing up for. I think that's, what we're, that's something we, we can fight for, right? right. Um, and I think for the first time, this is the, this is the big step. This is the first step. This is, we have people um, that are on our party here together. We're gathering and um, coming together in, in, in finding um, a, a solution or, I guess, um, a tactic or a, a, a plan on executing. So um, my idea would be, um, it was there was land for sale on um, River Street. It was 0000, zero, zero, zero River Street. Um, and it was on the market for seven years for 350000 It was six parcels um, divided by the uh, Highway 9. Uh, two of the partials were on the left side if you're going up toward Fountain. The other four were on the right-hand side. Um, uh, the two were borderlining Poconips. The four were borderlining um, Paradise Park. And it was only 350000 That's not a lot of money. That's, that's no. easily uh, uh, either fundraised or uh, 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 a private donor could easily uh, donate that, right? Uh, I was heartbroken. Yeah, right? I was heartbroken yesterday because when I looked, because I, so what happened, I you know I always would go and, and you know check and look and see if it was still on the market. After seven years, for some reason it's off the market, but I think it's because we're making a noise, we're making we're we're, we're shaking the ground, and I think people are getting a little uh, um, uh, not afraid but intimidated because um, we are forced to be right. You know, um, um, on the contrary, and kind of off the record, if we wanted to, we could. You know, shut this town down in a sense. There's, there's, there's some, there's some riffraff that that, um, that we could we could do that, but we don't. You know, um, and now I'm saying we can cause a threat, but before it has to get there, you know, because people are desperate. You know, and it's cold outside, and, and it sucks. We don't have nothing to eat. You know, or 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 a means to wash yourself or wash your clothes. Yeah. You know, it's 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 not easy. And then when you give us a little bit of means, you you you, you put this perimeter or this barrier around this thing, we can't do this, we can't do that. And like you said, they put a spigot down there. Thank you. You know, there's freaking running water. But then, of course, anybody who's been in construction, there's no drainage. So there's going to be uh, stagnant water coming up. So we divide, to, we, we, we dug a, a trench, which now they're complaining about, saying we, we excavated and try to, uh, a citation, that's, that's all bull crap. It's all, um, um, a, 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 I say it's a, um, a diversion or a distraction because they don't want us. They, uh, us, uh, the homeless coming together and um, and come, coming as as a union, like like uh, we just we uh, started. Um, it's a force to be reckoned with. I said because there's homeless people everywhere, um, and not all of us are thieves. Not all of us are drug addicts. Not all of us are uh, are, are criminals. You know. Um, some of us are, are and even if, even if the ones that are, we're still people. That's right. Right? right. We're still people, and, right. and right now we're local. That's right. I'm a local. I haven't been back in Santa Cruz for a long time. I, I left when I was uh, 20 years old, and I I, uh, I went to abroad, pretty much. I uh, went to um, some college, and then I got into church, I got into ministry, and I fell in love with restoring people's lives. I, I, I fell in love with seeing people's lives uh, uh, that were falling apart, get, get brought back together, you know, not just by a, a God or a high, but a higher self, a, 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 a find their self worth, you know. And so I think that's what's happening. That's what happened here in San Lorenzo. We found a home within each other, within ourselves. And so um, that lands off the market, but there's 600 and, and something acres of the Poconips, right, um, that we maybe can start it because I, I, I'm an indigenous here. In this county, um, uh, I was born um, in Santa, Santa Cruz County, uh, at Dominican, and so um, I figure I'm an indigenous, and I know if my rights were violated, and I feel um, a certain way, like um, I'm getting ahead of myself. Um, the clubhouse is a great, 
uh, location for a, a hostel. In Reno, uh, there was the homeless that, that they, there was a, a building that they um, converted into a hostel. Um, we can do something like that, or uh, like I said, a restoration, a, a, a recovery home, or um, uh, I mean, there's lots of uh, 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 there's lots of things we can do with the clubhouse, um, and I'm just that's the program. Yeah, and I'm just targeting that because it's just sitting there. Yeah, it's just sitting, you know, it's just sitting, it's sitting there rotting away, and it, and it hasn't been um, proposed uh, since since 2009, I think, or 19. Uh, 19, 1999. It's been like 20 years. years in it's been like 20 years, and but now it's um, it's it's open. The, the, I think it belongs to the county, or it doesn't belong to the county. But it, um, I think I mean, solutions like that are um, um, fine. Like that property. What I wanted to do with that property. There's 30 and a half acres, and it was PG&E and water ready. Um, tiny homes. Mm. We can develop tiny yeah. homes. Uh, that's what I was doing in, in, in Texas before I came here. <laughs> was uh, prefabricated tiny homes. Um, there is so much recycling that we can use. Mm. We don't even need to go to Home Depot. There's right. recyclables, recycling all of this town that we can right. use and, and, and put together and actually have a small tiny home kits. Um, now, a, a problem would be, I mean, um, uh, I mean, there's all kinds of stuff, so let me cut it short because I'm getting carried away. <laughs> Because he's 
medically sensitive. Don't know what that meant, but so they said, so go down to the bench lands where it's super healthy and safe. Then he arrives there, and uh, the next day he uh, goes to the bank, comes back, and his place had been bulldozed because it appeared. I mean, he's in a wheelchair, so it didn't. He just didn't. It just didn't look that tidy. Um, but um, that shows the ridiculous circular, reverse circular logic that we're that we're facing. And and we were all invited there. It was not a sanctioned camp at first. They keep utilizing this term, sanctioned, not sanctioned. And whatever is convenient for the city at, the moment. at that moment, they use, and then they will revoke it. And it's, we have, because of the way the city is walking into these um, logical traps that they've set up themselves, all we have to do is snap, 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 close, connect the dots, and we need to make this you know, done on, on a legal basis, but also public relations. Uh, and this isn't the type of victory that I like to go out and seize. I wish the city would work with us so that Santa Cruz could be a city that actually shows compassion. what can be done with compassion, with working together. Um, we, should be, we should be creating the next miracle of creative yeah. problem solving instead of this fiasco, a never ending fiasco that that it gets so absurd that sometimes I think, well, just go to sleep. It's a bad dream, obviously, but then it's like, well, no, I'm awake and it's been this way. And um, all it takes, though, I mean, not all that it takes, it takes hard work and you can't ever let, let up. Um, those who are able need to step up and uh, do some some light lifting, heavy lifting, whatever it may be. Um, we can't always just rely on having Alicia be there or Keith be there. Um, we can because they're going to be there. But um, but there's a lot for us to do to distribute the uh, the work that needs to be done. Uh, I mean, I can feel. I mean, this, it's going to. We're going to. But, right. but what does that mean? And, yeah. you know, I mean, we need to create the, the solution, create that future, right. not have it handed to us. We need to be, and we need to be allowed to partner into this, um, this future that is our lives. And we're not, you know, we're not just stagnant people that are stuck in one place. You know, we're a continuum. We've got, you know, this is not our end point. Um, and even if so, I mean, some of us, like living outside and be wild. Where? As long as we're given the information and we're given honesty, truth, honor from the city, we can operate. Um, and if they don't give that to us, then we need to find uh, methods to demand that. And we do have those. Um, we do have channels. We've got a lot of channels. Um, but it's but really, we need to make sure that we're starting it from those who live there. We need to light a fire on her butts um, and um, uh, utilize the homeless union, uh, Huff, who not bombs, um, utilize these, these groups as support to our ideas because we do have a lot of skills there and a lot of, and our lives are at stake in the future. And those that we love, I mean, are
Um, and, and we need to thank them and, um, and let's pick up the slack and, and let's move forward and get something done. Thank you. Thank you. So, my name is Robert, and I'm a local. I've been here since I moved here in 82, graduated west side of our Pumperita school, which is Jedford High School. Um, what I see happening is the company uses fear as a tool to try to instill fear in us that we won't stand up for our rights. Yeah. Okay, and it breaks my heart. Mm -hmm. It really does. And we need to not be afraid. Fear destroys everything we try to create. So just be brave. That's all I got to say. Thank you. Yay. Who else wants to speak? Yay. Who, wants, uh, who else lives in this camp? Yeah, does anybody live in the bench lines at Preston Talk before I do? I, I live there, but I don't like you to talk a lot. Oh, give it a try. Blue, you can talk. Come on. Blue, you're with friends. You're with friends. Yeah, we're all like that. No, not really. Family. That's right. Don't take that into most environmentally conscious award. This is a blue. work together to not fight or have wars on us. We need to clean up our messages because if we don't clean it up, we all will be checked out soon. And the cop part of it said, don't clean them out, we're going to have a major It's sat there for four months. Why is it sat there for four months when you turn it up? Mm -hmm. You took it away. Turn it back on. That you're going to find it's up to it. Oh, yeah, it's yeah. not part of the. It's the. The party party. Coffee. Someone else's property. That's why it's not being removed. If our property was there on the hill, burned out, they would have removed it. Yeah, I know. It's not my business. Sorry. Well, anything else you want to say? I'm just scared. Thank you, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, yeah, we want more of them. And Kazoo, you got to speak about oh, it. Get up here. Yeah. You got the best stories, Kazoo. Yeah. One thing, real quick, we got Kazoo. This is, this is to um, all the um, red. I know it's frustrating, and I know that we've been done wrong a lot. But um, we have to uh, rise above our emotions and um, not target. We know uh, they're the target or whatever, but no, there's no target. I mean, there's a solution. Because the back and forth is not what we need. It's going to create more, and they have more resources and more money. You know what I'm saying? So our, our emotions can easily get involved, and we can, we can become a lynch mob, but that's not going not gonna to do anything. So um, I know it's frustrating, guys, but, but trying to bite your lip. Um, and, and, and act uh, above approach. That means uh, um, uh, way above how they were at. You know what I'm saying? Because it, we're better than that. Yeah. My name is Gazoo. I live on the bench lands. Um, I'm living in my truck. They tell me like they do everybody else. I do truck pay for it. The audience. Okay. The money out of mine, they take the truck and after so many days, they can't get it back anyway. They can't afford it. They've done it before that. They did it twice. Once was seven hundred. They threw me in jail. Once was seven hundred. Once was five hundred. But it was at the beginning of the month so I could afford it. Now on the base lands, the rats. They're getting bigger and bigger. Lots of seltzer works. It blows them up. That's but you don't know, only buy people don't sell to yourself. Uh, it's just the problem is down there. Um, I think for everybody, for that many people, we're not doing that bad. Everybody tries to clean up out there. Right. Trying it. Everybody else is, they're just, they're picking on us. They want us out of there. They're going to get us out of there somehow. And let's like, you know, I don't say this, but we all get together, go down the boardwalk some Saturday and go, hey, we not got to leave town. Get out of here. So, right. yeah. But, you know, then, like the gentleman said in front of me, we don't want to be the lynch mob out there. But um, they're lynch mobbing us. We're going to have no place to live. I came from a place where... The reason I'm here is a divorce. I'm going to a damn divorce. I own property. I mean, but you can't get it from restraining order and stuff like that because some people have lawyers and they're smarter than us, meaning my wife. And so uh, I'm there. I'm uh, making the best of it. Uh, I, all of us here, I love every one of the people here. I mean, Amen. I'm 
when I grow up, I'm going to be like this guy. Yeah. But, you know, <laughs> that's when I get there. But, uh, I love all you guys, and I just, the best time to me is, um, the way for the best time to be at home. And, and I got a place to eat. That's right. I mean, she, my, my, I got four pieces of property. She's really got me up against all my properties where restraining orders. If I go where I go, if I call her, I go to jail. That's why they throw me in jail here all the time. As soon as they, they hear all these things around, they steal my cars. I got other cars, but the restraining orders. Ah, go on and on and on. But the best land is, as far as I'm concerned, heaven. Amen. That's it's, right. it's a big rap, Kevin, but it's it's their heaven too. <laughs> so so uh, okay, what well, Lady with the hat on. Well, who are you? There you are. Okay. And then I know you. And then um, and then you had a question though first. Let's yeah, I just want to introduce myself. First of all, I'm Commander X and I'm live streaming this on my Twitch channel and we're gonna put it on YouTube afterwards for everybody to see. Um, the the streaming audience had a question about housing first initiatives and wondered if Keith could speak on it for a minute. Okay, so housing first initiatives is this to in my experience since it was the term was coined, has not resulted in housing at all, uh, ever, um, basically. It's like housing not. That's my experience. Uh, I think it's sadly it's mostly a slogan. I'm sure some people got housing, but relatively few. Um, we know, you know, with the, the, we know it's like, for instance, on the Housing Matters sign, they were saying 900 people are housed, but we happen to know that frequently what that means is of extremely, um, um, you know, a person who is not likely to survive in a house for very long because of, you know, whatever the substance abuse issues or mental health issues, uh, might get a house because of, you know, the more problems you have, the higher your point score is. And then you get in there. So I have a friend, Jeff, who got housing in Watsonville. He didn't even last 30 days. He's now wandering around him town again because uh, it's immediately like, well, he's not appropriate. And so people like Alicia, who's uh, not in that category, spent three years trying to get her whole family to housing. And, uh, and it was probably political pressure that eventually got that one family in housing. So a lot of that number of 900 are 900 people who got housing for maybe 30 days. Yeah, how to be quite a deal. And or house in jail. So, uh, so how, housing first is, is, in my experience, is uh, like a lot of a lot of the programs. So we talk a lot. There's been conversations about doing an audit of the. It's uh, you know a little over a hundred million dollars a year is spent on homelessness in all in Santa Cruz County. A ton of that is uh, is really the emergency room because it makes sense, right? A lot of it is uh, police time, uh, overtime, yes. but a lot, but a lot of that hundred million dollars is not actually housing, right? And and year after year, you hear a hundred million, a hundred million, hundred million. After a while, that's some pretty real money. You can almost, you know, you look at San Francisco, right? Because of the way the federal and state laws are, and county law in San, San Francisco, they spent sixty-three thousand dollars for a 10 by 10 square in a parking lot at, near UN Plaza with a pup tent. Each pup tent was $63,000 for, I don't know how, if it was for the entire COVID pandemic or if it was like a month. I think it was for the whole, for whatever the time is. But you know, you could have actually put that person in an, an apartment for that kind of money. And this is what we see is that the, the way the funding is organized, and this has been the case since the Clinton administration, it's organized in such a way that it ultimately it, it, it is not allowed to be used for stuff that would make sense. And so, and largely that's because, you know, they're so careful, they don't want anybody to get off on something for free, right? And so, um, you know, it goes to salaries. Like, you know, so housing for, Health, uh, Dr. Ratner got what twenty million dollar grant. Uh, you know, it was twenty million dollars for two years was granted for his program, but he specifically told me it wasn't for housing; it was for his program. So this is a, it, you know, the, it's designed to make sure the homeless industrial complex is designed to make sure that there's more of us on the streets every year 
because that benefits the people that are making money from this state. And the, the, how many people, like how many months has it been? It's like a, a year since the Housing Matters shower went down. Mm -hmm. And they had all this, they, and then Jeff Bezos gave $2 million, and then they couldn't use it for the shower because it was for something else. And this is the story you get endlessly. That the money is, if you only understood the money, you would understand why none of it is really used to help the homeless. And so this is why Housing First is like that. Yeah, you have a question? That's why I was saying a um, solution, right? A solution. Yeah. Uh, the money isn't just going to be given to us, but um, like I've seen a group of young, um, they're all Asian. Right, but they had um, um, all the same T-shirts, and they're giving us food. Um, grants were probably given to them because they have uh, 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 um, their uh, the organization, right? So, like the tiny home thing. Say, uh, me and him, me and Jen get together, and we have um, a proposal. We have blueprints. We have everything um, we need um, on paper, and we give to them. Then that's that right there is a good indication of them uh, granting us a grant or some funding because we have. Um, uh, uh, down on paperwork. That's what they want to see. They want it's, it's like a corporate thing. Well, let me. I want to. I want to talk about. Um, um, Sorry. Um, we have a, a chapter in uh, Pensacola, Florida, <laughs> Food Not Bombs, right? And we went on. We did a Bitcoin fundraiser, and we bought uh, about 25, 30 acres of, of forest land in Pensacola. If you've ever been to Pensacola, it's a map. It's like land size is three. It's like the size of Santa Cruz County, but it's a town, and a lot of it is vacant. So they bought like a, a forest, and they they then wanted to have people live in that forest. That's why they bought it, and they had to fight. There's a great documentary about the the years of struggle with permitting and how they did. You know, the the entrance to the place was illegal. Blah blah blah. You know, it, they 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 went, they did it anyway, and had to fight the city. For the entire time, they're still fighting the city to this day. That was like maybe ten years ago, um, because the issue wasn't that they had the money and they owned the land. It was because they were owned the land for homeless people to live on, and the little village that they created was fantastic and beautiful. But the city didn't want unhoused people in their town, so they just fought them. And we just looked at a, a parcel of land on Seventh Avenue for a tiny homes development. And the original land, the main person on it was so excited about it and everything. We're like working with Mandu and all these people trying to get a tiny home village there. And in the end, you couldn't get, you know, the family was so fed up after a while. They said, no, we're not doing any tiny homes on that land. So that's one of the, the biggest problems is that, you know, what the, 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 the units that are over on Coral Street that they're, Starting to build. They've been working on that now for what, 10 years, 15 years? As long as I remember, they've been going to build those buildings. And, and, you know, banks wouldn't cooperate, financial systems wouldn't cooperate, couldn't get loaning. Um, a lot of our unhoused people in Santa Cruz County are people that get red tagged in the 2007 2008 foreclosure crisis. And where Wells Fargo just confiscated their house as a result, they're you know, and then now now they're moving outside. I've run into a lot of people that's ended up moving outside from that. So um, so that anyway, that's how it's, there has to be the Clinton administration. I think became the most uh, devastating for homeless policies, and it's just trended worse ever since the Clinton administration. I mean, I, I, I when I started putting up bombs, Reagan that was running for president. Then Reagan became president, and it was terrible by 1988, and that's when they started really clamping down on homeless people, and uh, really maybe even 86, 87, and um, you know just gotten worse and worse. And, what, and talk about clamping down. Today's the 33rd anniversary of the original arrest of Food Not Bombs. First nine of us were arrested 33 years ago today, and. Uh, that started what became a thousand arrests for feeding the hungry in San Francisco. Eventually, the city gave up. We still share food there, um, and uh, it all, but it did inspire the founding of chapters in over a thousand cities and over 55 countries. And we had to set up a whole system of uh, we had risk arrest one day a month, we had bombs program, we had all kinds of ways.
ways of, of standing our ground. And, uh, and so, you know, we're not going to be intimidated away from the town clock or anything like that. So, Dan, we have, we have more people living on the streets, and then we're going to get to you, Brent, with your programs. They're fantastic. We want people to hear about them. And um, I, I have some encouragement. Encouragement? Yeah, Dandy, so why don't you speak? Any other people? Come on. Keep going. Now you got to speak. Come on. Any, so, no, you, you, yeah. Yeah, you come up first. And, um, and I'm going to try to control some more. Okay, so I found since right when COVID started, uh, there was nothing. There was no help. Um, I was driving around with my heavy duty trash bags because people <coughs> went wet and cold because everybody stopped helping. Uh, you know, homeless people. Uh, people were really cold because it was super cold when COVID started and it was raining at the same time. So, I mean, I was like the bag lady, you know, and handing out these bags, which was really effective, you know. It, it did a lot. It, it was very, you know, efficient. And that's kind of what I'm all about now. I'm a construction worker. A lot of people here are still fit and construction workers, and a lot of us are retired carpenters with, like, you know, basically a master's degree in carpentry. And um, what I like to do is have, like, a group of people who are willing to you know, agree to at least talk about um, starting to build tiny homes um, and then if they're on wheels, then any land that we get, we can just roll it on there and if we got to move, we can roll it up. So that's the most efficient way to get around the um, fact that they're not letting us still anywhere. And uh, also, you know, um, I'm a targeted individual. I've been microwave weaponed in my house, and uh, that made me homeless long before I even, I mean, I didn't even need to be homeless back then, but I had to get out of my house. And I had all kinds of proof, you know, meters. It, it was like being this close to my microwave was like being in my bed. It was that. It was like deadly. I had to get out. And, um, and you know, sometimes it's neighbors. Um, it's a $50,000 budget that have to torture people, most of us are women, most of us are Rh negative, strangely there's a whole biological thing and a lot of medical implants have been tested on us and a lot of stuff that comes out I'm like, oh yeah, <laughs> sounds familiar, been through something like that, you know, like heart rate changes, uh, you know, uh, ionizing radiation, non-ionizing radiation, high, uh, high frequency sounds that are not from my body that change when I just move to a different area because they're just where I am, um, things like that. So, you know, we're dealing with the future, and um, basically I'm very cynical about, um, you know, what, what are we all looking at in terms of people wanting to help us after living in San Francisco when Willie Brown was uh, the um, mayor. I had a friend, Carpenter, who was getting paid a lot more money than normal, Union Carpenter, um, to build homeless shelters on uh, kind of like a waterfront area that was gonna to be torn down in three months. And they put in the padding and the carpet. They put a really nice carpet. They spent all of the budget, they put millions of dollars uh, to get rid of the money that they were going to have to spend on homeless housing. So that's that's what we're dealing with. Um, I never heard anybody get really in trouble for that one. There's no accountability. There's not going to be apparently. Um, we're not really organized that much. Um, we need to get organized. So, you know, just accountability and, and taking notes. One thing I've been thinking about is, you know, head count, like who's getting killed, who's getting knocked off, a lot of women are dead. Yeah. Uh, I'm really concerned about the women. Yep. Um, and, uh, you know, uh, I move around a lot, I hide out, that's why I would never be in a place like the bench, so that's I gotta move, partly because of the microwave warfare. Anywhere for three days, it's, it's really uncomfortable. I just end up vomiting. So, especially if I get a job or a date or job interview or something like that, it's been that way for a long time. But um, if you want to look up Barry Trowery, he talks about microwave war warfare. Um, it's been going on for decades. Barry Trower um, worked for MI6 and uh, now admits that we've been doing this for decades. And this is from England and it's happening here as well. Worldwide, uh, most countries are involved in this uh, satellite stuff. 
So it's like you can't hide, you know. But anyway, um, with that dark thing that's going on, um, that's just part of, like, since the Senate looked into that, um, they said, well, you're not actually catching terrorists because it's an anti-terrorist thing, and that's the premise for doing a lot of this stuff, which means, you know, we don't have any civil rights because they have excuses and they don't have accountability because they don't have to uh, answer what are we doing, what's well, top secret, you know. Um, but anyway, um, I feel that homeless people are targeted in general, whether they're microwave, whether they're hearing synthetic voices or not. Uh, when I say synthetic voices, I mean uh, there was a battle in Iraq where 80 soldiers all heard the voice of Allah synthetically in their heads, you know, drop your guns and give yourself up to the Americans. Have to go. <laughs> they all did it because they were so religious. Mm -hmm. And that happens to our people. I know a lot of people that are experiencing different things. Also, there's sporotrophosis. There's a fungus that's getting in the dust that's getting into people. It's super itchy, like my legs. I have to cover them if I go near where there's a lot of people, especially homeless people, uh, people that don't bathe a lot because this, it's a fungus, but it becomes um, kind of this uh, uh, yeast in the body, but it, there's also nanotechnology involved. So I feel that there's been sort of experiments going on, um, medical experiments not treating this thing, and people have been dying with open wounds because that causes necrotic open source and they tend to just go up along the that's pretty gross. But anyway, it's really hard to get a doctor to diagnose this or treat it. So that's something I've been trying, you know, They say you're septic, that's what they tell you. Yeah, they say you're septic and I mean I have friends that have died, you know, and how did they mean I'm like, oh, you know, like being the ambulance chaser that I am. Yeah, why not? Um, you know. I so I, I just want to uh, give my appreciation to Fred Keeley for being the only political leader that actually arrived here. And uh, so that's like, and, and the other Mariel candidate, I also invited here personally, but she didn't show. And uh, so, it, and he did, and he was invited. He didn't show. Um, in fact, all the city councilors were invited, uh, and so we'll show next time. So the only person that showed was Fred. So just so the people, I, I I saw him leaving. I want to make sure he knew that we recognized that he came. So okay, so we have um, 30 minutes left. So what I want to do now is we're going to let um, some of the other service providers like Brennan speak, and then what we want to do is to hand out socks. And then people that want to be in the union, and you probably signed this, we're going to give you a, a union t-shirt to wear in the camp. And um, so, and, and uh, we can do more of those shirts. If you have other friends who want to be in the union and get the uh, yellow shirt. And then also, uh, we want to start taking statements of uh, what would the harm, if you were kicked out of the bench lands, what kind of harm will happen to you? Because we need to have a couple of people write that up. Um, and, and, um, but we also will probably just go to the bench lands tomorrow or the next day and, and, and get, get those statements. And then we will um, file our litigation in the next couple of days in federal court again, as we have done in the past. Yes? I just want to say, if anybody gets bulldozed and you know, stuff thrown around, let me know about it and we're not <laughs> okay, great, okay. That's beautiful. I have a question. Yeah, you have a question, yes. Yeah, so you're going to do a class action lawsuit? Not exactly a class. So, unfortunately, so far, we've been trying to get homeless people to be a class, and it hasn't, courts, have, in my understanding, haven't, haven't said that they're a class because it's. Yeah, because it's an economic thing. Yeah, it's a claim that you don't have the money to rent a house, and therefore you're not a class. So, but it's going to be, a, a, but you will be. You're, it, so, it technically, it's not a class action lawsuit, but it is. You will be a a person in a lawsuit. To uh, and and certainly, I will. We want to get your statement as well. And uh, there, was, some of the people here have already been in the last lawsuit. Describe what it is. It's essentially it's a restraining order. It's called an injunction. It would be a restraining order to restrain the city from evacuating the encampment. And 
And that's how we started. And then essentially we kind of ended up negotiating, you know, the city will go back and forth. This is why we need to eva evacuate the camp. Then we'll say, you know, this is why it needs to stay. This is what could happen. And then we end up with some sort of negotiation if we get that far. There's a chance that when we do these things, it could be directly denied. Um, the judge could hold on to it and think about it. The judge could grant it with provisions. When you put these things into the hands of the federal court, you don't know really what you're going to get. So all we can do is try. Yeah. That's what happened before. It's actually kind of why the bench land is still intact is because we were successful to get a federal injunction almost two years ago now. Yeah. Um, and the, the encampment has stayed intact since then. Yeah, so you had another legal question about that. I mean, there is an attempt to get homelessness as a class, and there's a lot of attorneys over uh, around the United States right now trying to work on that. Yeah. So we're, we're not homeless people. Like we are people who work and have lost our 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 jobs and our places to live because of an economic crisis that happened. I work in yes. restaurants. All the restaurants got shut down. And now, now I'm treated as this, this person. So, that, yeah. So, and then I'm told, oh, I'm not a class. Like, but a, a class action lawsuit isn't doesn't have to be a class of people that are the same. A class action lawsuits are legal cases involving a large group of class members suing a defendant, uh, and they come together because they suffered a similar harm. Like, we don't need to be like a class, like oh, it's a black board, like. It's well, that's really good. So you should work with uh, Alicia and see if we can get that to be over the hurdle because we keep getting stopped with that. But that would be great. I think you're, you've got, you know. A lot of people have already suffered a lot of uh, harm. That's yeah. not entirely where we keep getting caught up. We keep getting caught up because Martin versus Boise has holes in it. It is not, it has not been challenged in a way that makes it really black and white. And that, that's, I mean, that's first of the truth. The encampment isn't even an adequate place to, for yeah. people to live. There's that's two what, that's areas. what that, that, the one you're referring to. Yeah, yeah. Martin versus the Voice is supposed to be an indoor an space. Adequate, an adequate place to live. When they opened that up and I walked up there, I looked at them and I was like, this, this is inadequate. And that walked away from me. Yeah, right. We're not trying to because I didn't think it was like. Yeah, like, but it would be great to have you on our legal team. If you want, that would be fantastic. So then there was. Um, Robert and then, yeah. Yeah, okay. I guess so, and then we'll have Robert speak. Yeah, Brent's supposed to. I'll be quick. Yeah. So why don't Brent talk first, and then we'll take questions, and then I want to hand out socks and, and t shirts afterwards. Hi, everybody. Uh, warming Center, Footbridge Services, Storage Program, Laundry Showers, a Women's Shelter. We've been doing a whole bunch over the last 10 years uh, without any city or county help, even though we've reached out, been denied. But we really, I really want to talk about the field of things that need to be discussed tonight is broad. So I'll just try to cut right through and get some basics here. I see three columns. One is the natural, national paradigm that has been discussed, housing first. That's a real thing. It's well-intentioned. How do you end homelessness? Get people into housing. It feels good. Everyone buys in. The national, the, the, the ten-year plan in the past was called all in. It actually is broken, as we discuss, discuss because people, their their homes are not for you, not for us. They didn't reserve their spare bedroom to bring somebody who sleeps outside in. The entire program is broken on the west coast of San Diego, San Diego to Seattle. It's not working in a single city. And they're not ready to claim defeat yet. They're they 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 keep doubling down on it. So that's a huge problem. Unfortunately, the people on the left and the people who mean well in Santa Cruz also want to believe that we're all going to get housing. I'm sorry to say, but definitely the squeaky wheel gets the grease. Yeah. Do get on all of their lists. Do play the game. Do if you have a Section 8 voucher, I recommend maybe trying another town where there's more housing. Uh, anyway, that's not what I want to talk about. On the other side, there used to be this uh, anti-homeless uh, camping ban for decades in Santa Cruz. Really, the city leaders and the county, uh, they're trying to get back to that desperately, and they've actually already cinched the deal. The, and the, the mechanism, and also, let's admit, 
uh, uh, let's let's open our our our, our cognitive uh, uh, concept to understand that if you have a house or a business or or a tourist, uh, just let me get, get, get complete that that people who do have houses and businesses. Really, it's not their benefit to see tents or people sleeping in their doorway. I just, where I you, just. Where do you get your funding from? Uh, I don't get funding. I, I write grants and I have to uh, uh, get twenty dollars here, twenty dollars there. I actually didn't pay myself a salary for the last two years. You don't get grants from the federal government. No, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about something else. Thank you. Um, so, so what's true is they're trying. So, the, the uh, it's appropriate that there be some sort of guidelines on people sleeping outside but we want to talk about this there's been camps from since 2017 since martin versus boise and chief mills allowed to uh, a large encampment in the benchlands and then they cleared it every three months and people moved back and they cleared it every three months and i discovered on a tour of the west coast i went from i camped out myself in 40 cities from san diego to salt lake city to seattle to see what was going on. And I discovered something amazing. First, what you find is Santa Cruz acts like it's a bubble. It's the only place that experiences homelessness in the world. And every other city plays that game too. In fact, they play that game. They don't, we should be working with all the cities in the region, all the, all the counties in the region. The reason they don't, it's a, it's a money game. They're extracting that money from the federal government and they all compete against each other. But what, what I found is, in San Francisco, well, I saw camp sweeps in every city I went to, and people, the police mistreating people's belongings every place I went to. But in San Francisco, you'll see some elegance. They have the hot team there, uh, DPW. What they do is everybody has their stuff on wheels. Yes, they're camping for three months, then they clear that space. Everybody, they don't bitch or complain. They move three streets down and they uh, street clean. And then three months later, they move and then later they're back. And they call it camp displacement. We tried to talk to the city about that in Santa Cruz. Like here we have a certain number of people who are outside. You're not actually housing them. They are here. Can't we have some elegance to this? Well, what's true is let's agree. We've been experiencing camp dis displacement all this time. You're still here. Many of you have been in the uh, Ross camp, right? Uh, you're still here. You didn't dematerialize in the space. They didn't jail you. They didn't bury you. You're still here. So let's agree that no matter what happens to this camp, you're going to be somewhere. That's a, that's a fact. But what's true is we saw the Benchlands 20, uh, 2017, then we saw the Ross camp, then, then in my backyard I had unintentionally host uh, Camp Paradise and uh, Hell's Trail, and then we saw the highway camp, and then back to the, the Benchlands, point uh, 2.0 and point 3.0 and all this. So what's true is, they're not letting us know where you actually go and after all this. So we're going to end up someplace. We can't, the city doesn't work with us that way. We should have a, a, a non-profit. We should have a left of center uh, community that wants to work with us this way. But unfortunately, we don't. Uh, there are reasons for that. But what I would like to encourage you is that realize that in a few months and even six months and even a year, if you're not in housing and you're still in Santa Cruz, you are going to be somewhere. And the best thing that you can do is double down on those values that agreement camps were trying to talk about. Take care of your trash and be really responsible with yourself and encourage your neighbors. Don't steal from your neighbors. Okay. Don't. Then this is this is a class value. Try not to use openly. Try not to trespass into the neighborhood. Try to be good neighbors for your unintentional hosts wherever you end up. We had an agreement camp for nine months out in Harvey West without a complaint. We dealt with our trash, and it was a strong. And then the city moved us into the bench lands, and then finally we got flooded out. The city said they'll arrest us if we ever do another agreement camp. And yes, we have. And now we have this fucking. Uh, bench lands that we're trying to defend, and it's really something we should not have, you know, desired in the first place. So my encouragement is this, and I have a lot uh, uh, to say to you uh, in the end, which is get together a strong group of people. Some people want to defend, some people want to build tiny homes, a lot of people have lofty visions. But just realize out there someplace is a field, and that field is going to have tents in it. And that field is going to have garbage and porta potties. 
And I'm sorry, I, I'm not voting for that. I'm just trying to be. I'm pragmatic. Thank you very much. Okay, well, you thank you, Bill. Yeah, everybody get a shower, grab, take your stored stuff there. If you're, um, so Robert, and then, no, you first, Elise, so and then Robert. Uh, I'm so jazzed by this. You guys, I really want, Miss, I'm really interested in you because of your organizing energy. I want you to hear this. Uh, 26 years I've been studying organizing. I was homeless myself for a while. I just want to say, I've never seen the energy around homeless organizing that I'm seeing tonight. Uh, one gentleman, I don't see him right now, he was talking about the community, the belonging. He was really talking about home at the bench lands. He said, it's a home. There's belonging, there's community. This is so important. As far as I'm concerned, the thing I've learned by studying labor organizing, democracy organizing, everything I've ever studied, and I've heard other people say this, who uh, were advocates for homeless people. We have to do it for ourselves. The speakers tonight have been awesome, awesome. Organized, great thinking, passionate, representing others. There's so much great energy and relationship building, and that's what a union is about. So. Thank you for bringing it tonight. Thank you for being here. I am so inspired, and I'm so happy. Alicia Cool, a few years ago, when she was living in the trailer, she started coming to city council meetings. Look, at, she's one of the best organizers I've ever met in my life. And you guys, you all. So we have to do this together. We can't think that somebody else is going to do it for us. And that's what I'm seeing tonight, and it's really inspiring. Thank you so much. So, uh, now, how many people here want to have another meeting here next Monday? Yeah. Yeah. And we, to go over what's happening. Okay, so we'll do it again next Monday. And it um, seems like this is a good location. It's close to the bench lands. Um, we already have our meetings here. So we need volunteers in Food on Bombs. So you could actually come at 5 o'clock to the Food on Bombs meeting and volunteer to do the Food on Bombs. And then about 6 o'clock next week, we'll do it again here. Um, we all have the meals every day, as you know. Um, we, and we, here's, on, on Tuesday the 28th, which is a week from tomorrow, is the city council meeting where there's supposed to be, uh, uh, the city manager's supposed to be discussing what's going to happen and everything with a three-year plan of the homeless Camp plan. Tell us all the great new shelters they're going to open up in the next month. Um, stuff like that. I don't know what they're going to do. But anyway, when we wrote the city manager, Matt, he responded, they're going to put up fences right now all around San Lorenzo on the upper side. You can see the poles have already been put in. Uh, Elizabeth Smith claimed that because of, uh, of uh, there's some difficulty in getting enough fencing. I have no idea really what that means. Um, and uh, that was quoted, I think, in, in, in uh, Lookout or something last week. Maybe it was in local. What are the fences for? What good is that going to do? To yeah, it doesn't. It's not a solution to homelessness. I, 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 what's interesting is that, that it seemed like the last city managers had a relative that had a fence contract because he put fences everywhere. But this is like different fencing, so it's not the same family just making all the money on fencing. Yeah, right, change their name. So these look pretty permanent fences that are happening in San Lorenzo Park right now. They put poles into the ground already. Um, they're supposed to chain link that all up by Wednesday. And, um, that's, and that's to keep people out. That's to keep people out. If you notice, those poles are about 20 feet away from another fence. Yeah. You know, it's a fence around a fence. Is yeah. anyone who's been money? Yeah, so, yeah, so we got money. And that's why our slogan, Home's Not Tense, we, we don't, we're not advocating that everybody in the bench lands to the paradise. We're not advocating that everybody in the bench lands get a place to live. We've had 30 years of preparing to house everybody in the bench lands, and we haven't got around to it yet. We don't even need each person to have a house. We just need to have services, like be able to take a shower so you can go get your jobs, so you can get your own place to live. Right. You don't even have a place to go take a shower. 
Yeah, there could, we been, we fought for for like the whole time of the bench lands to have a shower brought there. The city kept blocking us. What's with them closing off of that bathroom up there too? Yeah, yeah, they say it's vandalism. They close all the bathrooms. Yeah. There was the first hundred days of the pandemic, we were the water for people that put up on because they shut the bathrooms down. Oh, they're giving away land to the developers. Yeah, they're giving, yeah. Yeah, meanwhile, land grabbed by developers, they're giving away, and they won't even follow the law passed measure O that was supposed to provide 15 or 20% affordable housing when you still pretty expensive. Yeah. So they're giving away land that they don't want to use. Yeah, that's the other scam that's going on, is this affordable housing scam. Um, most of the time, they just like like the the Front Street project to go to the all the plant meetings for that. They're supposed to be like an X number of percent of affordable housing there. Well, they actually reduced that amount of affordable housing, and then they're now going to pay into a uh, you know a trust fund to avoid having to build affordable housing. So affordable housing, you know, by the time any building gets built that's supposed to have affordable housing, and it's no longer affordable, and and. Uh, you know, we were like evicted from where Taco Bell used to be instantly. And it turned out they were freaking out. They were going to tow our shipping container and everything because they were going to go to a million dollar escrow in the morning. And you could go, we've been here for months. And you just find out about it like the day before you're going to a million dollar escrow and you're all angry that we're, um, you know, there. You, maybe you should come to Santa Cruz sometime if you're going to be building huge luxury condos in our town. And they, they had no idea what they're doing. Then the next, day, then on the first of the year, the whole property transferred to somebody else, which are the people that are currently building the luxury condo. And and so it, and and there's a really good movie that I did show before the pandemic called Push, and it shows how and, and, and I, that basically. A, Billions and billions, trillions of dollars is being dumped into luxury condo projects and those kind of projects just to do something with all the money we gave them at the beginning of the pandemic. You know, we as Americans gave, you know, it was the largest transfer of wealth in world history, right? And all of our resources went to the to Vanguard, State Street, um, Black Rock, and now they are just devouring our community. So I go to the, the, the national train for the National Union of the Homeless in, in uh, Manhattan, and I have to walk past the, tram the uh, um, uh, Port Authority every day, and there's these uh, five luxury condos, glass towers, 50 stories tall, that say luxury condos for sale on the top, but they're all fading and falling off the signs. And you can't get into the luxury condos because there's an entire tent city up against the the wall on the sidewalk of all of these luxury condos. So instead of having people live in these five 50-story buildings, they they live in tents and boxes around the base of it. So then my host, Chris, who lives in Hell's Kitchen, goes, well, you think that's something? You should go to South Bronx. And I spent a lot of time in South Bronx over the years when that was, you know, the victim of mafia insurance fires. And there's mile after mile of condominiums that's sitting empty. You, every single homeless person in, in New York City could have a floor in a condo, the whole floor. But, the, the, but, the, but because of the economic and political system, they'd rather park their money in these luxury condo projects, was very likely all these buildings on Front Street and Pacific and everything will just sit empty largely empty for years and years while we're being shuttled around and there's never larger uh, homeless population living here in Santa Cruz. So next week, between now and next Monday, think of ideas, more ideas, concrete ideas. Um, and it's just really a shame that that the mayor did not show that only one of the two mayor candidates showed. Never no, we, uh, I've talked to all those people personally, invited them here. We told them that 20 people voted to have them come hear the stories, because you cannot actually end up with a solution to this crisis if we are not included in that solution. If there's a class blindness of the people in power who can't, they just imagine, oh, of course you can catch, what? Now, when do you have to catch the van to go up to 
overlooked an armory? What time of night? Does anybody know the hour? 7.30 or 8. 8.30. 8.30 there sometimes? That's the last one. Okay. So, so then if you're not, and then what happens when you... three days to miss, and then they take rope, they go through your chin at night, so they take a light and call your name. Yeah. So it's, and then, so it's a, it's a, you hear this all the time. I mean, I ran into what, like maybe eight or nine people this afternoon in the bench lands who told me how they were up there or they were at the army before the army closed and they just get thrown out, you know, yeah. over the littlest tiny things. That's not stability. No. You can't improve your life by worry that you're going to, it's oh, yeah. more stable in the bench lands. Oh, yeah. This is like, we're opening up the indoor next week, I was told that, uh, the army is supposed to, you're going to open up for inside, uh, inside again, he, uh, I talked to uh, the guy right Jeremy, or oh, Jeremy Leonard, yeah, next week, uh, yeah right. talk, uh, and I would like to point out that there were 70 people up there when I, I was going up to the armory and to what was called golf links at the time, and the golf links one was much better organized than the current one was like really a nightmare. But then they, so there were 70 people in the armory. They had, they ran out of money, right? Their contract was over. So those people went to the bench lands and now they're going to take those people, basically put them back up there. Well, that's not a net gain of 70 people getting housed. That's 70 people had a, exactly. had a little cot in the, in the armory. Then they didn't. Moved to the bench lands, now they're moving back. Wow. That you can't say, oh wow, we've got these solutions yeah. because you've just kicked 70 people out, now you can put those 70 people back. You know, so it's, it's, it is like whack, whack a mole or whatever. Right. Yeah. Hey, what about, let's say you have 150 uh, beds that uh, a champion, champion board is supposed to affect. So that's the other thing is what. They're pushing for right now. Yeah, they're trying to add up all these places to be 150 places. Yeah. And then they can start, then they can say, well, we're in compliance with Martin versus Boise, where this is the ordinance, and then they're gonna, but uh, if so, if they go through, to, realistically, if they go through with the next month, uh, putting people out, they're gonna live in the, in the It's just, so, it's, Martin versus Boise does have a whole it does have a whole that adequate shelter space is indoor. Right. So these That's outdoor the tent spaces are not cutting. <coughs> I know the city might think that that right there is not a house. It is for every homeless person. Yeah. All Can I give it to you afterwards? Yeah. Exactly. It's not 500 people in the bench line that have to have a bed. It's all three or four thousand people living outside that have to have a bed. And, 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 and we all can agree that their accommodation is crap. Right. Right. Um, yeah. You gotta be checked in when you go there because they're all your stuff. And if you have time, you're not able to have a job because you're you should have the legal right to be an, a, a, an autonomous human. Um, one thing I heard today that this young woman was talking, she said accountability. Um, the reason why some of us are here today is because of accountability. We kept each other accountable. Yeah. When we do that, there's structure. There's at least a little bit of structure. The, what, the reason why the mayor and, and any political person, why would they come waste their time with a bunch of disobedient children? That's what they think. Yeah. Right? So as we keep ourselves a, accountable and we continue this this uh, momentum, guaranteed they're going to come and, because they're going to be like, okay, well, well, hold on, what's going on here? Um, we need to devise a plan, like you right. said, and um, and yeah. a living a, a, a living plan. <laughs> All right. But um. Yeah. But Apple donated a hundred some million dollars towards all this Santa Cruz, San Jose. Yeah, you had to, that one. You had something you wanted to say? Yeah, yeah I just wanted to, uh, something that just came to my mind. Uh, the Pete Smith shelter over there on River Street, right? uh -huh. it's empty right now. All those buildings are empty. Yeah. They have, the building what, they got like six, six or seven triple wide mobile home or modular home with six, I think six to seven rooms in each building. Are empty right now. Why don't we occupy that? Why don't we just yeah. start occupying? Yeah. Okay, Elise? Yeah, I just, I, by the time I got up there, my thoughts were kind of disorganized. I just wanted to say what I was trying to get to is there is so much power in this room Amen. tonight. And I've been, yeah, really, and I've been examining city council up to the COVID for the previous about six or seven.
seven years. I went to like 70% of the meetings. I went to the Homeless Action Partnership when they all wanted to come together to get the money, the grants, the professional people who are getting the money. So I just want you to know, this is different. What's happening here today is different. In my examining of the homeless issue, I have never seen so many uh, articulate, interested, engaged, knowledgeable, uh, such a fighting spirit. And let me tell you, that's what politics is about. If you don't show up at the city council meeting, and you don't <coughs> sit outside, if you don't let your power be felt, <coughs> it's not going to happen. They're not going to change. It's up to us to do it. So anyway, I just want to say I love what you just said about accountability and coming together. This is how we're going to get the changes that we need. Well, then, so we're going to have to start because poor Tom needs to go to bed. He's the one running this place. Don't and forget about the socks. And we're going to hand out socks and t-shirts. And Robert, one last thing. The reason they want everybody out of bed for that is the city of Santa Cruz has a permit to pump the water out when we're rolling. The thing is they have to maintain the vegetation, the pollution out, and make sure it doesn't go into the uh, ocean, or they lose their permit to pump the water from the river with the water park. No one knows that, but I do. That that's why they're pushing to get everybody out of the river. Oh, okay. Wow. They have a permit to pump water. They have no other rights. They have to maintain with the water department or watershed on the pollution in the river and the, and the garbage. Well, that's why they should have the built 300 units of housing a long time well, well, ago. Yeah. Yeah. For people yeah. who are going to the development. Yeah. 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 They can give the land to developers and they can give it to the people. Why don't they penalize the countless houses up in Lower Creek and Ben Lomond and the Southwest? Okay, so what? So what? We're going to. What was your last statement? We gotta go because poor Tom's gonna to freak out. Okay. <laughs> so we have to wrap it up. Come up and get socks and shirts. And we invite everybody, same time, uh, 6 p.m. next week here at that So we only have uh, Lauren, Jeff, Lauren. Okay, everybody. Um, so that brings an end to the the meeting here uh, regarding the impending eviction from the bench lands. We've heard a lot of great speakers and everything. Um, I'm going to wrap up the stream now and talk to some uh, people here, give out some information. Thank everybody for tuning in. Thank you so much for paying attention to this um, incredibly important issue, listening to these heart-rending stories. Um, really appreciate your support. Uh, I'm going to post this entire uh, stream on YouTube later on, so follow me uh, at Twitter. It's at Commander Exanon. Uh, follow the follow the Twitter, uh, and I'll announce where it is posted on YouTube for uh, future viewing. Share it with everybody. Thanks again so much, you guys, for all your support. Thanks for tuning in. Really appreciate it, and uh, I'll see you soon. Bye-bye. I'm going to